Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be looking at the 2018 governor elections based off the 2006 election results. And pretty much if you don't care about this, then um, I guess then don't watch the video, I guess. But um, this is going to be pretty interesting considering that the results were very different than what they are now in terms of incumbents and also who's pretty much running in each race. And also the results are pretty different than what we are expecting today. So pretty much this is the current uh, composition of governors and 16 uh, Democrats, one independent and 33 Republicans, actually one down from where they were in 2016. But we're going to do this in alphabetical order. We're going to start off with the first state of Alabama and pretty much is a Republican state. And uh, the way I do this is tilt is going to be uh, less than one percent. Lean is going to be one to five percent. Likely is five. Uh, sorry, six to fifteen percent, and then safe is greater than fifteen percent. So uh, we'll start off with Alabama, which pretty much is greater than fifteen percent, but very narrowly, but still a safe Republican state. As for Alaska, Sarah Palin wins there uh, by around eight percent. I guess uh, that goes into the likely column for the GOP there. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at Arizona. So the Democrat here actually won with 62.6% of the vote. So that is very interesting, meaning it goes into the safe Democratic column in the state of Arizona. Arkansas as well. This is a Democratic gain. Uh, pretty much actually, I believe, uh, Asa Hutchinson, who's currently the governor, ran against Mike Beebe, who now has, uh, who won with 55.3%, but not quite enough to put it right over that 15% mark, but uh, could have if it went uh, narrower, I guess. Um, California, Arnold Schwarzenegger wins with 55.9% of the vote, so also very narrowly over for that 15% mark, but California, a safe Republican state. Weird saying that. Uh, Colorado, uh, Bill Ritter wins with 57% of the vote, exactly 15% more. Sorry, not exactly 50% more, exactly 17% more uh, than the GOP opponent. So Colorado goes into the safe Democratic column. As for Connecticut, which has contested this election uh, season, the Republican wins with over 60% of the vote. Connecticut easily goes to the GOP. As for uh, Florida, Charlie Crist wins here with 52.2% of the vote, but it's not an overwhelming victory. It just goes into the likely column for the GOP. As for the state of Georgia... Sonny Perdue, a Republican, wins by over 15%. So Georgia goes in the safe GOP column. As for Hawaii, uh, Linda Lingle uh, wins with uh, a huge margin. She is a Republican from Hawaii, which is also pretty interesting. In Idaho, the uh, Republican actually wins by less than 10% in Idaho, which is very interesting to say the least. As for Illinois, the Democratic uh, governor there wins re-election, but by around 10%. So Illinois uh, goes into the likely column for the Democratic Party. Iowa, the uh, Democrat wins here by around 10%, like uh, Illinois. So Iowa goes in the likely Democratic column as well. As for Kansas, uh, the Democrat there re-elected by over 15%. So Kansas goes into the safe Democratic column. As for Maine, that one goes into the safe, uh, sorry, actually not safe, likely Democratic column because the Democrat won here with 38% of the vote, um, which is not too good, but 8% win over the GOP candidate. As for Maryland, my state, Martin Amalek wins here, which is a Democratic gain with 52.7% of the vote against the incumbent uh, Republican governor, uh, which we also have up in 2018, but the governor is a little bit more popular than where they were before. Martin O'Malley wins with 52.7% of the vote to 46.2%, so not a overwhelming, uh, an overwhelming margin. Um, but pretty much a little comfortable around 6%. Over in Massachusetts, right here, a Democratic gain uh, by over 15%. So Massachusetts goes in the safe, sorry, not likely, safe Democratic column. As for Michigan, this is a, another likely Democratic state. Could be a safe one if it just was a little bit more in the favor of the Democratic Party. As for Minnesota, that one narrowly, very narrowly goes towards the uh, Republican there. And Tim Valenti wins with 46.7% and Mike Hatch with 45.7%. So Minnesota goes by 1% um, to the GOP and tilt is less than 1%. So that's very, very narrow. As for Nebraska, that one easily goes to the GOP candidate way over 15% of the vote. As for the state of Nevada, that one goes towards the uh, GOP candidate. So pretty much that one goes into, I believe, the leaning column for the uh, GOP candidate in New Hampshire. That one easily goes to the Democrat, winning with 73% of the vote. That is a huge margin. Goes safe into the Democratic column. As for uh, Bill Richardson in New Mexico, that one goes into the safe column for the Democratic Party out of New Mexico. New York, that one is a Democratic gain, which is pretty surprising, but 69% of the vote for the Democrat, obviously going into the safe column. As for Ohio, that one goes into the safe uh, Democratic column. Keep in mind, this is the same candidate, Ted Strickland, who ran in 2016 and was easily decimated in the... Uh, 2016 Senate race in Ohio. So that's very interesting to look at a governor who won re-election by such a large margin, go into 2016 and run for something 10 years later, only to lose 
I mean, pretty badly. Over in the state of Oklahoma, that one is a safe Democratic state, as crazy as it sounds, over 30% margin for the Democrat there. Oregon, uh, pretty good for the Democrats, not a safe margin, a likely margin for the Democratic Party. As for the state of Pennsylvania, that one easily goes to the Democrat by over 15%, so another state to fill in into the safe column. As for Rhode Island, uh, the Republican there was reelected. Uh, with a margin 51 to 49, so a very narrow uh, 2% margin in the state of Rhode Island. As for the state of South Carolina, that one goes in the likely column for the uh, the GOP candidate, sorry, not the Democratic candidate. And then we go ahead and take a look at the state of South Dakota. So that one goes towards Mike Rounds. Um, he pretty much wins with 61.7% of the vote, obviously more than 15% in Tennessee. So here's a candidate now up in 2018. Phil Bredesen from the state of Tennessee won every single county in this race. I remember researching this race. Phil Bredesen wins with 68.6% of the vote. Keep in mind, he left office with a 74% approval rating, now running for the United States Senate race out of Tennessee, safe in the uh, Democratic column. Now we can go ahead and take a look at Texas. Rick Perry, many people know who that is. He actually won with 39% of the vote. He won with a plurality. Um, Chris Bell, the Democrat, got 29.8%, and then two independents, one got 18.1%, and then one got 12.4%. So clearly, this race was very, um, I guess, staggered. Uh, Chris Bell won, uh, sorry, Chris Bell lost by less than 10%, so that means Texas goes into the likely column, whoa, for the GOP. Uh, I don't know why it keeps misclicking, um, but pretty much we can go over to the final three states, Vermont, Wisconsin, and Wyoming, and pretty much... Uh, the state of Vermont easily goes, actually, to the GOP, which is pretty interesting considering they have GOP governor now. Uh, seems like times would have changed, but they pretty much have in terms of the presidential races, but not so much in terms of the governorships over in Wisconsin and Wyoming. Actually, uh, both going to the Democrat, but more in Wyoming for the Democrat. So whole new meaning to Wyoming is a safe blue state. And then Wisconsin goes to the Democrat with 53% to uh, the Republican 45%. So goes into the likely Democratic column. So pretty much we finish off our map with 28 Democrats and 22 Republicans very different than what we see here. Obviously benefits the Democrats, but in areas you might not expect. That is the weirdest looking map I have ever seen, but okay. Uh, we have 16 Democrats here, 28 Democrats here, but not a Democrat in California, or in Connecticut, or in Minnesota, or Vermont, or Nevada, or Hawaii, and there's no Republican in Oklahoma, in Kansas, in Wyoming, in Arizona, in Tennessee, in Arkansas, in Iowa. So these very very interesting results that honestly map it kind of horrifies me to be completely honest with you seeing weird parts of the country that means pretty much we've thrown out everything if that was an electoral map it would also be a lot worse because that means a lot has changed but pretty much we finish off our map with 28 democrats and 22 republicans thank you guys for watching this video comment down suggestions below and i'll see you all tomorrow